please explain these images all right so multi panel multi sequential mr images starting from the right top uh, lane or uh, row it's a t2 axial image followed by a diffusion weighted image followed by a flare axial image uh, flare uh, coronal uh, image why is the third uh, one a flare axial image just a minute madam uh, okay no, it's, it's it's t1 image it's a t1 image okay uh coming to the bottom uh, row uh these are uh, first three are sagittal images uh gray white uh, starting from flare then uh, t2 gray and white then again uh, why is the third one flare why is the first one and second row flare and uh, let me reconsider uh, the first three the images first are sagittal the, yes. the, the first three images are sagittal images starting from yes. the first one uh it's green and white this one is flare why because uh, which three structures we have to look at and then we decide gray, that green and white matter green and white matter and, so and 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 gray matter white matter and csf and, and there the, are three and structures the CSF. The csf yes oh. this is a you can't see it, csf it, so you yeah so if you look at the globe the signals in the globe are hyper intense so hyper intense so this is t2 followed by the other t2 images as well okay and the last one is uh, gray and it's white t1 uh, this t this t yeah t1 axial okay. so okay. there is a normal intensity uh, to begin with uh, there are abnormal signal intensity areas involving the uh, bilateral uh, um occipital lobes okay um, which appear uh, hyper intense predominantly hyper intense on t2 images uh, on diffusion weighted image uh, there is a uh, suggestion of uh, rest uh, diffusion restriction along the periphery of the described uh, uh, lesion on flare images uh, it demonstrates uh, intervening uh, linear uh, and curvy linear hyper intense signal uh, areas okay there is uh, mass effect and displacement of the occipital horn uh, of the lateral ventricle anteriorly on the right hand side on the right side left hand left side left hand side left hand side okay okay all right so what are uh, the signals on t1 on t1 images uh, on the provided t1 axial image uh, it's iso intense predominantly uh hypo 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 intense is there so, some hyper intensity in them yes with the internal hyper intensity okay. yes yes with internal hyper intensity so uh, in conclusion uh, of the described findings uh, this uh, abnormal uh, intensity area uh, represents uh, internal hemorrhages um, and uh, since uh, we have uh, diffusion restriction along the periphery of the described abnormal lesion uh, this may represent uh, uh, an area of infarct with uh, internal hemorrhage or hemorrhagic infarct one possibility okay. uh, is this and the other possibility yes. could be g okay. uh, yes sir the other yes, possibility um uh, since it's uh, these are multiple lesions at least two uh, this would be the first po uh, possibility the other differential uh, could be a um a neoplastic lesion with internal hemorrhage um okay. there is no significant surrounding uh, edema uh, as such but uh, then again the possibility of gbm uh, is uh, could could be considered as the uh, one of the uh, differentials um, you are considering multifocal gbm i am considering a uh, multiple infarcts uh, as my top differential multiple since uh, infarcts needs further characterization for the characterization so, so uh, may have uh, I, i would be looking forward to uh, further uh, imaging uh, and geographic uh, images um the patient has raised um, 
urea creatinine and the patient is having renal impairment as well and the patient cannot undergo uh, a contrast uh, angiography yeah. for example and on the basis of these you have to give your opinion to the clinician how will you guide them the clinician and there are two more features on these images which you have not described yet if i am asking you that what type of infarct is this further explain your answer so what yes. am i expecting you to answer uh you are expecting me to um, look into the, the age of infarct how many types of infarct are there no not the age of the infarct the infarct i'm or asking about whether infarct. it's arterial or yes. venous all right so since uh, there are uh, it's following a particular uh, arterial uh, territories that is uh, the posterior circulation um i would be more inclined to call this uh, as multiple is it purely uh, is it purely a posterior circulation is it involving occipital region and medial temporal region and rest of the cerebellum or some of other areas related to posterior circulation or is it involving part of mca territory as well because it is involving the lateral cerebral surfaces as well so do you think it is an arterial territory not okay Madam, uh, so uh, uh, there are two I'm more still... features on these right yeah. there is uh, it's okay it's okay there is a subdural e one hyperintense area in this region which can be a subdural uh, hematoma as well there is some extension of edema through the corpus callosum sclerosum of corpus callosum as well there is, so there is extension of edema from the midline so i will move on to the next set of images and this is showing susceptibility and some gyri form enhancement as well so please explain this mrv so uh Uh, time of a three D time of flight image uh, from MRV study, MR venography, uh, demonstrates uh, paucity of uh, uh, signals uh, in the left transverse and uh, sagittal sinuses. Uh, there is. also absence of uh, flow or signal uh, noted uh, on a focal at a focal area in the right um junction of uh, sigmoid and transverse sinus okay so how will you conclude your findings now the images you have seen so far please some of them so uh, by the way you have 3 to 3 to 4 minutes on one film in exam Yes, ma'am. So, so in conclusion, single film, you will be left with rest of the film. In conclusion, uh, these uh, described uh, findings uh, demonstrate a venous infarct uh, due to uh, DVST or deep venous sinus thrombosis, which is identified on these uh, MR venography images. Uh, which venous uh, sinus is involved? Uh, right and left uh, transverse uh, sinuses. Is this the area of transverse sinus distribution? Um, ma'am, transverse and okay, sigmoid junction of transverse. Hmm. Yes, there is some flow void here, but this was basically due to paucity of vein of labe bilaterally, and this is a superficial cortical uh, vein uh, thrombosis bilateral. This is vein of labe infarction, and I am going to show you in the next slide that which which is the venous uh, distribution area of vein of labe. in these images susceptibility weighted images you can see that there is extension of this hemorrhage in the ventricle in the right lateral ventricle you can see a, a focal area of drop out in this image as well so these are the additional findings in this case and this was vein of labe infarction we we know that there are two superficial cortical veins one is vein of trollard and the other one is vein of labe so we have to be familiar with their art the way we are familiar with arterial distribution areas we should be familiar with the venous territorial distribution area so this is basically the overlapping area which is shown in green color as the inferior nasopharyngeal vein of labe drainage area so there is part of transverse sinus but basically there is involvement of vein of labe bilaterally 
And since I told you in the history that the patient had recent delivery, so patient is in a hypercoagulable state. So we will consider of venous infarction first instead of arterial infarction. There are multiple other no. features like presence of hemorrhage, which goes in favor of venous infarction. So you have to be, you know, very categorical in your description and you should, uh, your description should be more crisp. You should try to sum up your findings uh, in a more quick way. And uh, you should be very, you know, uh, why a young patient is having bilateral arterial infarcts. So even if you are considering arterial infarct, then you should consider some thromboembolic phenomena, which is involving bilateral cerebral hemispheres. You should be very well familiar with arterial distribution area because the area which was involved was neither of PCA nor of MCA. It was an overlapping area of both. So then you should consider of an alternate thing like a venous infarction. So it's a nice job, but you you need to you know go through this infarction again because it is a very important thing. And saying infarction doesn't um, conclude your answer. As a diagnostic radiologist, we have to give the next uh, roadmap to the clinician. So an infarction can be picked up by a, new, a neurologist or a neurosurgeon in the ward as well. But to categorize it further, here comes the role of a radiologist. And these are the um, uh, MRI brain images, axial, uh, coronal, and sagittal uh, sections. First is T1, T2, T1 post contrast, and uh, uh, T1 uh, sagittal. There is a um, large uh, low signal intensity uh, ligand is noted in the. Uh, um, in the uh, cellar region, and uh, and uh, how do you characterize a lesion by large, medium, or moderate? Do you or small? Do you have some set criteria for that? According to books. Everybody, mute yourself. Okay, now please uh, give your description. It's a it's a small uh, small to medium lien in the cellar Just region. Tell me the criteria on the basis of which you decide that it is small or medium. I am asking you as uh, you know uh, a qualitative measure. Uh, Ma'am, if I'm talking about uh, pituitary um, gland, then uh, um, less than uh, if it is uh, less than 10 mm, then it is uh, micro, um, smaller lien, and if it is more than 10 mm, then it is uh, large. What are you talking about? Are you talking about pituitary or some other structure? Ma'am, I'm talking about uh, pituitary. Okay, so. What is your subjective assessment? Is it less than 10 mm or more than 10 mm? Ma'am, it appears... Um, it appears to be less than 10 mm. So it's a small lesion. Okay, now go ahead with the rest of the description. Um, and uh, it is. it appears a hyper intense on T2 weighted images on the right lateral, uh, on the right uh, side and uh, adjacent uh, cavernous uh, vessels Carotid vessels they appear unremarkable, and uh, on the post contrast images, it shows uh, 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 more mild uh, enhancement is noted. And uh, any uh, other additional features, ma'am? There is a large sphenoid uh, sinus hyponematization of the sphenoid sinus. Take a good, it is important to comment on sphenoid sinus because most of the surgeons, they need this for transphenoidal or transnasal approach, surgical approach. So it is good to comment on this. Yeah, and any yeah. other dis any other point you want to add in the description of lesion yeah. itself? But the optic asthma, uh, it appears um, uh, uh, unremarkable and the putri stock, it is also unremarkable. And uh, if you look at the coronal uh, post contrast T1 image, which is the last in the first row, can you see some yes. deviation of the optic stock? 
uh, of the uh, pituitary stalk in fundibulum. Then it comes towards the left side, but um, yeah. other than that, I don't see any okay. major abnormality. And ventricular uh, chain, it is unremarkable. And rest of the brain parenchyma, it is uh, unremarkable. So, uh, uh, based on these findings, uh, uh, is pituitary microadenoma, then uh, memporelectin hormone, hormonal levels, and uh, okay, serum prolactin and other hormonal levels. Okay, yes. so okay, can you please explain that uh, what is a dedicated pituitary protocol and why do we perform that? Uh, ma'am, this is uh, um, uh, uh, it is uh, ma'am performed in a, a, a coronal uh, ma'am T1 sections they are obtained and uh, yeah. T1 is important as to see pituitary apoplexy and uh, uh, also about the ma'am that is plain T1 that is plain T1 right so when we also perform dynamic images what is the significance of that? Uh, Ma'am, um, because um, and, uh, T1, uh, normally the, uh, this uh, posterior pituitary it is um, hyper intense, uh, which is um, uh, due to neurophysin. And on post, uh, on dynamic images, if uh, pituitary, uh, there is a lesion in the pituitary gland, it, uh, it shows no enhancement or it uh, appears hypo intense. Okay, we perform dynamic pituitary exam. To categorize this lesion as a pituitary to to further delineate that whether it is hemorrhage whether it is pituitary cyst or is it a microadenoma the microadenoma enhances later and the normal pituitary uh, gland it enhances in the earlier phases like we perform um, pituitary imaging uh, in coronal plane focusing only taking only thin cuts in the region of pituitary after every 30 seconds and we perform almost excuse me, six to seven set of images. And then we look at the area of differential enhancement, the way it is seen in the image here. It is it is taken early. There is no enhancement in the region. Uh, just excuse me, I'll take some water. So this is an area of differential enhancement. Initially, the pituitary gland is enhancing. But later on, the microadenoma enhances and the contrast, it leaves the rest of the normal pituitary gland. So we perform dynamic to look at the areas of differential enhancement. So good. Thank you. So this patient had raised protectin levels and these are the imaging interpretation first. This diagram shows the stock deviation and rest of the finding. There are multiple and multi sequential MR images uh, taken at the level of uh, orbits. <clears throat> uh, first two images are of a differentiated ADC, then uh, coronal T2, T1. And uh, these two are T two, and these two are flare. Yes. So what are you <clears throat> There is an enlargement of the um, medial and lateral rectus muscles on the right side. Okay. Uh, along with <clears throat> proptosis of the right eye, it is displacing uh, anteriorly and uh, crossing the zygomatico temporal line. Okay, proptosis and is fair enough. It's okay, you don't need have, to have any you know, rest of the resident proptosis. You said that's fair enough. So, what is the cause of this proptosis? What are the other supportive findings? The last one here is a T2 fat set, right? This is T2, this is T2 fat set. 
what are the findings you can see in this image? Other than the enlargement of uh, muscles, uh, there is uh, <clears throat> intraorbital at uh, altered intensity area involving the uh, retro bulbar space, which is uh, hyper uh, hypo on T two and hyper on T one. Are you talking about intraconal area? Yes. Okay. Any other findings? Diffusion restriction. Okay. Just focus on this image, the first one in second row. Can you add some more findings to your description? These two images are very important, The these two coronal images. So I would like you to focus on these and share two more findings with me. There is involvement and of if, the right yes. optic nerve also. Okay. Complete, uh, right optic nerve is uh, completely obliterated or encased by this <coughs> GN. Okay, so should I move to the next set of images or do you want to add something more to these from these two images? There are two very important findings. One in this image, the other in this image. You haven't told them still. I am unable to appreciate on the Okay, images. I'll go to the next set of images. Maybe you will find them there. Can you see something here? Some additional findings. The findings which you have already explained, just leave them. If you can find something else, you can appreciate something else and you can share that with me. I'm giving you 30 seconds for that. No, I'm, I'm unable to find any other findings. Okay. If you compare these two orbits, can you see this large flow void here? Yes. What is this? So most uh, at, at this location, which structure lies? Superior ophthalmic vein, right? Thrombosed. So there's a prominent superior. It's not thrombosed. Don't call it thrombosed. We are not sure it is thrombosed or not. We can't com comment on flare images. It depends on the direction of flow. It is not a T2 weighted image. If there had been no signal in this on a T2 weighted image, we could have called it a thrombosed. There's a large area oh. of flow void in the region of superior ophthalmic vein, or there is a large dilated superior ophthalmic vein. So what are the causes of dilated superior ophthalmic vein? If you focus on this image, this you is the see. left ICA. And on the right side, you see a multitude of flow voids. Yes. So these yes. in the presence of large muscles Mus and signals uh. in the intraconal fat and proptosis along with a dilated superior of thelmic vein. Now the diagnosis is very simple. So all these findings are, you know, very prominently displayed here. You can see multitude of vessels in this right-sided cavernous sinus, even on these T2 weighted axial images. So this patient actually had an RTA some time back. Okay. And now has developed a carotid cavernous fistula. So the image interpretation pearls are enlarged superior of thelmic vein and cavernous sinus. I already showed you these. This is from STAT DX, proptosis and intraorbital edema. This patient had all these features. And the reporting tips in this case are that CT and MR is suggested. And DSA is actually for definitive diagnosis. So if somebody asks you what next you will do, you will go for a DSA. So I'm provided with the multi-sequential MRI images of the brain. Um, axial sections um, on first two images are T1 weighted images and the uh, rest of the three images are T2 weighted images. On the T1 ima uh, weighted image, I can see that uh, there is some um, prominence of the intra and extra axial CSF spaces uh, uh, with uh, some small uh, 
hypertense areas uh, identified uh, in the uh, uh, centrum semi veil as well as in the um, periventricular region. These hypertense areas appear as uh, hyperintense on the tetuated image. And uh, it is also involving the, uh, I can see that uh, uh, these uh, T2 hypertense areas are also involving the subcortical white matter, deep white matter, and periventricular white matter. Uh, there okay. is uh, no associated uh, midline shift is seen. Uh, I cannot appreciate any surrounding edema uh, to it. Uh, on the, there is also a small hyperintense area in the right hemipons. So okay. keeping in view, uh, I'm suspecting uh, uh, these are, I would like to uh, see the further contrast enhanced images to characterize if these are um, probably demyelinating disease with uh, the pattern of the disease. Ma'am, I would like to uh, see if there is any associated enhancement in it, uh, either to see these are active lesions or it, uh, these are non-active lesions and the pattern of enhancement as well. Uh, if it is a... So, I would so like your to first see... is a demyelinating process? Uh, ma'am, ma some... Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 the... You want to keep it in your mind? Any other differentials you want to add? Uh, Ma'am, uh, this could represent uh, um, microangiopathic ischemic changes as well, uh, physical changes that as uh, the patient is over 55 years old and uh, has slurring of the speech as well. Uh, okay. How many times the physical changes present with slurring of speech? Mm -hmm. Not actually, not very much. They just have slow, you know. Changes. Okay, so these are the additional images. Do you want to add something? The, the description which you have already given, if you want to add something else, you can from these images. Okay. You can see uh, the lesions you have described already. Any other thing you want to add? Ma'am, th there is also susceptibility SWI and reverse uh, SWI images, and there is no evidence of any. Uh, susceptibility artifact in it. Uh, so there is no hemorrhage. And uh, on the, um, the I these are this image. Uh, ma'am, to differentiate between the calcification and uh, the hemorrhage. Okay. So there is and no calcification, there is no hemorrhage. No, no hemorrhage. And uh, there is, um, ma'am, for on the further images, I can, uh, I'm provided with the DWI and ADC mapping. And uh, on these, I can see that uh, uh, there is some ring like uh, um, uh, uh, some of the legion in there. Uh, one of the legion in the right periventricular white matter shows uh, uh, increased signal on the DWI and as well as one in the pons that shows restricted diffusion. However, um, few of them are. There is another ring like lesion here. Ring like yes, restriction here. Okay. Yes, ring like restricted diffusion as well. However, one in the hem right hemipons shows um, complete uh, restricted diffusion. So, ma'am, this could represent an uh, uh, infarct of the different ages. Okay. So, how will you confirm your diagnosis that is it a demyelinating area? Because it was very typical juxta articular, juxta articular, intratentorial, everything was going till here in the favor mm -hmm. of a demyelinating process. Demyelinating process. When you reach the diffusion, uh, the picture is slightly altered and you are having another second thought to reconsider your diagnosis. So how will you confirm that? How will you guide the clinician to make a would, diagnosis? Uh, yes. Ma'am, I would like to correlate with the history if the patient has vaccine and weaning symptoms. Uh, with uh, so this would uh, goes towards the multiple sclerosis or the demyelinating disease. However, uh, if said that there are infarcts of various ages. Yes, so can infarcts of various ages can present with waxing and waning symptoms as well? Yes, ma'am. So yes, how ma will you confirm yes. with the help of history? Ma'am, uh, I would like to see. Uh, ma'am, uh, some lab investigation, the... right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 ma'am, uh, I would like to do the uh, ultrasound uh, doctor for the um, internal carotid arteries as well. 
Uh, okay. So to see the thromboembolic event, as these are the micro infarcts, not very large. So there is nothing in the uh, Doppler. So if the Doppler is normal, can can the still can still the patient have infarcts or not? Doppler doesn't have any significant thrombosis. It has good IMT. So now, how will you differentiate? That is it um, infarction or is it a demyelinating? You will go for CSF and you can do oligoclonal bands in the CSF and you can perform visual evoke potentials because the, these two things have a high specificity and sensitivity to exclude or to keep the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. There is no high grade stenosis in MRA. This was a patient, patient had slurring of speech initially, then got better and then later on developed some numbness in arms in, they, when we probed in the history, the patient gave a history that sometime he had some kind of transient vision loss which returned on its own. So the history was going in favor of multiple sclerosis. The differential was definitely of an infarction because there was the, the pontine lesion was especially showing a true diffusion restriction. So we did not have any post contrast images. Patient had CSF for oligoclonal events and that was positive and the patient was treated for multiple sclerosis. So when you are talking about multiple sclerosis, you should be familiar with McDonald's criteria because it can be asked in your exam. You should be familiar with dissemination in time and space. It is written very well on radiology system. I have taken this from there as well. Just go through there uh, from there because they have uh, they upgrade their um, articles uh, very frequently. Whenever they get some new information, very nicely they have shown that what is meant by dissemination in space. What is a juxtaarticular lesion? What is a periventricular lesion? There is a there is an infratentorial lesion, and then there are lesions in spinal cord. So if you have more than two lesions out of these, so they say that if you have more than one T two lesion in at least two out of four areas of CNS, and these four areas are which I have already shown you: juxta or intracortical, periventricular, infratentorial, and spinal cord. This is called dissemination in sp uh, space. And they have mentioned an extra point at the end of this table that for patients who are more than 50 years of age, you have to keep more than three T2 lesions because in those patients, there can be old lacunar infarcts and new infarcts, which can present like um, uh, areas of multiple sclerosis. So that is why they have a different criteria for people who are more than 50 years. Similarly, you have to look at the dissemination in time. And dissemination in time is very well explained that there are this is an old scan and this is a follow-up scan and there is a new T2 lesion. And similarly, in a baseline scan, there were few gadolinium enhancing lesions in the new scan. There is new development of gadolinium enhancing areas. So this is called dissemination in time. Similarly, on radiology assistant, he has very well explained the four different types of uh, multiple sclerosis, relapsing, remitting, relapsing, remitting, followed by secondary progressive. They are relapsing and repeating in the same pattern and then there are abrupt uh, increase in the symptoms.